Maps define us. Imaginary lines that delineate neighborhoods. They speak to where we've been and who we are. But these old boundaries only show part of the picture. Here are the new maps of Brooklyn. These are the maps that tell the story of Brooklyn today. And this is what it's like to live on the grid. My name is Zephyr Teachout, and today we're going to be looking at where Yiddish is spoken at home in Brooklyn, where people work, where they live. So we're going to start with an interview with John Mollenkopp, who's the director of CUNY Center for Urban Research. He's going to take us through the numbers, and we're going to go on the grid in Brooklyn. Hello. Hi. Great to see you. Great to see you too. How was your ride? Very refreshing. See you. Going to have a great adventure today. We're going to talk about the Yiddish speaking neighborhoods of Brooklyn. Right. In particular, the most important ones or the biggest ones are here in Crown Heights, where we are, mm -hmm. Williamsburg with the Satmar community and Borough Park, which has a number of different Orthodox communities living there. Can we just start with numbers? Like, What kind sure. of overall numbers? Are well, according to the census, about 87,000 people live in households that speak Yiddish at home mm -hmm. here, here in Brooklyn. And the, the biggest one, of course, is Borough Park with about 36,000, about 24,000 here in Williamsburg, and then a smaller amount in, in Crown Heights. Of the people who speak Yiddish at home, did they grow up in this country? Where are they learning? 90% of them grew up in this country, and the median household size is six, so they have a lot of kids in their household. Can you give me some kind of portrait? Is there any kind of employment portrait that you'd see? I mean, it's interesting. People might think of, of Orthodox Jews, ultra-Orthodox Jews working in the Diamond District or B&H Camera or something like that. But most people in the neighborhoods are actually at home and studying and, and not at work. The poverty rate is, is pretty high, 47% of the people in Yiddish-speaking households in, in Brooklyn qualifies under the poverty line. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. What about women, gender, and work? There's, there are very low rates of labor force participation among the women, probably well less than half, which is unusual in New York because most, yeah. most women are working. So why don't we go into these three different neighborhoods then? These two are different sets. So the, the Satmar are here and the Lubavitchers are here in Crown Heights. And they have very different orientations to the world and to religion. The Satmar, for example, don't believe it's time yet for Israel to be a separate state. And they're also very inwardly focused, whereas the Lubavitchers are well known for their mitzvah tanks driving around town, and the people that come up to you and ask if you're Jewish. In terms of sort of interacting with politics, what would you say is the political profile? In a way, they're very much against the secular world. But I think they're very astute about the importance of their, their vote. Is this growing or shrinking? You know, what, I, I've read that sort of Yiddish on the whole is really in decline uh, internationally. In the long historical sweep, yes. The, the generation from 1890 to 19. 15 was a Yiddish-speaking movement from Central Europe. The Yiddish theater, Yiddish papers, and so forth has largely died out. But these communities are definitely growing, and the use of the language is, is very much alive in them. Well, thank you so much. This is really interesting. Good luck on it.